What up? Me again. Back again. I want to talk about something that you don't really see in the NBA. But you see it. But it's a little bit harder to see. And that's players that are under six feet tall. And yes, that was a joke saying they are harder to see because they're smaller. Ha ha. I hope you guys laughed at that one. But I want to talk about this because I feel like for a while we weren't seeing a lot of players that were under six feet tall. And recently, you know, especially with Summer League and, you know, just seeing new guys kind of trying out for teams and stuff like that, it feels like there's a lot more guys now that are, you know, six feet and under in the league that are, you know, at least getting minutes. You know, you had Jacob Gilliard with the Grizzlies last season. Uh, I believe then he also played with the Nets. You got Marquise Noel. Um, you know, you still have Fred Van Vliet in the league. You have a lot of guys that, um, you know, are shorter than six feet or maybe just six feet, and they're making an impact on NBA rosters, and they're getting minutes. And I think a lot of people have this misconce- misconception excuse me, that, you know, short players have no place in the NBA, and, you know, why would a team pick them to be on the roster as opposed to another guard that, you know, is 6'3 or 6'4, right? But I think what people forget is that basketball has a lot to do with gravity. And what I mean by that is you're constantly in different states of motion when you play basketball. And the ball is constantly in motion. You're dribbling the ball, you're passing the ball, you're shooting the ball, you're doing all these different things where the ball is getting whipped around. So people tend to forget about Muggsy Bogues who is the shortest player in NBA history and was a pretty high draft pick, too. I think he was, like, the 11th overall pick or something like that. Like, he was a really high draft pick. And to be that high of a draft pick at 5'3 is, like, that's insane. That's insane. That's a team being like, all right, we are using our draft pick that we got from missing the playoffs on a guy who was 5'3". It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. But what people don't remember about Muggsy Bogues is because, I mean, I guess a lot of people who watch basketball now didn't really see Muggsy Bogues play, but he was a menace defensively. And you wouldn't think that that's the case because he's so small, so you're like, okay, who is he really guarding? And sure, he's not, he's not going to be someone that's difficult to, you know, score on. You know, he's probably going to get scored on more often than not. But... He's going to do everything in his power to make sure you don't even get to that point. So Muggsy Bogues was ripping guys, like getting steals left and right. And a lot of people just don't realize, like, how useful of a skill that is. And, you know, maybe Muggsy Bogues isn't isn't the best example. Like, let's, let's talk about, you know, guys that are still shorter for league standards but aren't necessarily below six feet. Let's take Avery Bradley, right? Avery Bradley was like 6'1", 6'2". But you go watch a ton of these NBA podcasts and interviews, and when the person doing the interview gets asked who's the toughest person that they have to go up against, a lot of them are going to say Avery Bradley. And Avery Bradley was, like, the second you put the ball on the floor, Avery Bradley is like up in your teeth like he's going to get the ball or he's going to force you to turn the ball over or he's gonna you know block your shot like it was incredible he's just he's such a meticulous defender that he really could just he was he was playing chess not checkers out there you know he was he was really like zoning in on what his matchup was going to do what their tendencies were and all that stuff which I just think it's interesting because the the person that wins Defensive Player of the Year all the time is typically a big guy. Whereas, you know, the guards are the ones that have the ball in their hands a lot more. And if you're, you know, 
the best defender going up against one of those guards and you're also a guard, you know, you're, you should be considered for that award because you're going to be shutting down the main, the main guy who's really dictating what the offense is doing by passing the ball, shooting the ball, setting guys up, running plays. If you can shut that guy down as a defender, you're, you're in the money. Like you, you should be valued a lot more than you are valued. And, you know, guys who play good defense at a, as a guard level, they, they never really get paid like they should. You know, Patrick Beverly wasn't really getting paid like he should. He got a big deal, you know, I think when he went to the Clippers maybe. Um, but, like, Tony Allen. Tony Allen wasn't really getting paid like that either. And Tony Allen was really, like, the guy that, at least in, like, the modern NBA, was like, yeah, like, like these like smaller defensive guards that are playing on the wing, they're playing, you know, two through four because they can guard, you know, one through four. Um, and they're just, they're, do, they're doing everything they can. They're shutting guys down. You know, Tony Allen was like shutting down Kevin Durant, you know, in a couple, uh, couple of games back in the day when he was on the Grizzlies. And, you know, people don't give him their credit, right? But back, back to the, the really short shorter guys that are in the league they are an asset and I think they're continuing to prove that they are assets to teams not because most of these guys are very good ball handlers they're very very good at keeping the ball safe and they're good passers they're typically not guys that are going to put up a ton of points you know you had Chris Clemens a few years back who was putting up a ton of points I'm pretty sure he led led the NCAA in scoring like his senior like he was averaging like 30 points a game like something stupid Um, but yeah, like, I just think like, there's so much more to the league than just being a guy who's seven feet tall. Like, sure, you can't teach seven feet tall, but you also, it's hard to teach somebody to be determined and go for every loose ball and defend as hard as they possibly can if they're not in a position where they feel like that's what they need to do to be able to be on the team. Right, And if you're seven feet tall, people are going to always say, well, you can do other stuff. You're going to score back to the basket. You're going to face up. You can shoot over people, um, you know, get rebounds, all that stuff. But, but short guys, you know, they're doing what they got to do. Who's texting me? You see that I'm recording right now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I mean, defensive guards are really, really important. They're really important. And... I hope they begin to get paid a little bit better, you know, as, as we go forward in the league. I mean, everybody's getting paid better now with the new CBA and stuff. People are making funny money out here. It's crazy. But yeah, if you're a, if you're a short, shorter guy playing basketball or a girl, shorter girl playing basketball too, and you think, oh, I can never make it to the NBA because, you know, I'm, I'm below six feet, I'm below, you know, 5'10", yada yada whatever that's not true you just got to hone in on the skills that you need to be successful with your body type and for a lot of people that are playing the NBA that are shorter than six feet the niche that they fill is being that guy who picks up 94 feet drains the opposing you know point guard by making him work to get up the court and just being that energy guy who's going to lock in on defense and try to get as many steals as possible, try to get as many deflections as possible. Because that's really what it's all about. Is In the NBA, it's, you could have a guy who's you know, pretty good at everything, but you've got this one guy who's you know, superb at two things. The guy that's superb at those two things is probably going to make it over that all-around player. Because the NBA is looking for guys that fill a need and fill a niche. And, you know, these, these shorter guys that are coming into the league now, like, they know that. And they're, they're trying to do everything in their power to show, like, you know, I'm, I'm that defensive ace in the hole that's going to get extra possessions for the team. We're going to do all that. So have faith in these shorter guys, you know. Fred Van Vliet clearly got looked over. And, you know, you need to, you need to give credit where credit's due. I think Fred Van Vliet averaged like a, a like a block a game this year too. Like these like these guys are really defending. You know, it's not like not some crazy. I remember a few years back when Chris Paul was on the Clippers, people were saying that he should be defensive player of the year. You know, so your height, 
is really just a number when you're playing basketball. You just got to do everything that you can do in your power to help your team win. And if you're a shorter guy going into the NBA, that's playing lockdown defense and making guys work to get the ball up the court. Be a pest, f*** it up, do everything you can do to create chaos on that court. That's all it is, create chaos. If you guys like this video, let me know. Let me know what you want to talk about next. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun shit. And I'm going to keep it coming. Take it easy. Peace.